to welcome to this session of the seminar. Uh, the first uh, speaker uh, this morning is uh, Professor Ilyashenko. He's Professor in Moscow and in Cornell, and he will speak on limit cycle from Poincaré to nowadays. Please. The problem given f to find the functions f x of t that satisfy this equation. On the other hand, they are subject of geometry at any point in the x t plane. We have a direction, a straight line with the slope given by this function. And an equivalent problem is to plot the curves that are tangent to these directions. This geometrical interpretation was well known in the time of Poincaré, but Poincaré was the first to say that Differential equations are, in fact, a branch of geometry. At his time, it was already well known that for majority of the right-hand sides, the explicit formulas for the solutions simply cannot be found. And uh, therefore, Poincaré said that the differential equations should be studied by their right-hand sides directly. The picture like this is called phase portrait, splitting of the plane to the orbits of the differential equation. And Poincaré was the first to plot the phase portraits of differential equations near the singular points. This is if f is, say, a ratio of two polynomials, a singular point is a common zero of these polynomials. Uh, these are the famous pictures that Poincaré obtained. They are called saddle node, focus, and center, following Poincaré. And together with the geometric theory of normal forms, Poincaré established uh, sorry, the geometric theory of differential equations. Poincaré established the theory of normal forms. The paradigm is the following. We cannot solve the equation well, but probably we can find a coordinate change in such a way that the equation will be drastically simplified, and in new coordinates, it will become solvable. For instance, the previous pictures were plotted in bad coordinates. If you find good coordinates, they become linear, and you may solve the equation and plot the explicit phase portraits. There is a deep theory behind uh, this statement, and Poincaré himself has found an appropriate coordinate change not for all the differential equations in the collection above, but for so-called non-resonant, whatever, whatever it means, um, nodes, and um, FOTSI, uh, 
these uh, phase portraits, after an analytic change of coordinates, become linear and may be easily studied. Uh, only 60 years later, Siegel found an appropriate statement of the theorem about the linearization of a saddle. And what is a normal form for a center was understood only in 80s in the last century. Um, closed orbits on the plane of such equations are cycles. If there are no other cycles in the vicinity of the orbit, they are called limit cycles. And Poincaré was the first to introduce this geometrical object. And he said that limit cycles, like torches, enlighten the way to the understanding of the phase portraits of the differential equation. At this spot, I should confess that I quote Poincaré uh, not from uh, his texts, but from the quotations by other people. So if I should be a historian, I should write attributed to Poincaré at this spot. But uh, allow me to be not too much accurate. Uh, here is a, a limit cycle. And Poincaré introduced a very simple map, yet not considered beforehand. Um, you take a cross section. You consider orbits emerges from the points of this cross section and the point of the first return. You get a map, a self map of an interval into itself. And you may say very much about the behavior of the solutions of the differential equation near the limit cycle, uh, just studying this first return Poincaré map. For instance, if you have other limit cycles nearby, uh, I did not plot them, then you will have a fixed, another fixed point of the Poincaré map. Uh, if the map is analytic, then this is the graph of the Poincaré map. This is identity, and this is the graph itself. Um, if the vector field is analytic, if the differential equation is analytic, then uh, the Poincaré map also is analytic. And by classical theorems from complex analysis, it may have only a finite number of fixed points. So as a trivial consequence of the very concept of the Poincaré mapping, one may say that for an analytic vector field, I will show this picture later, limit cycles cannot accumulate to a closed orbit. Um, as limit cycles are very important, then sort of a hunt for limit cycles makes sense. And Poincaré made the first steps in this direction. Uh, he considered, uh, let us first look at the left uh, domain. There is a domain, an annulus, in which the vector field in the plane is uh, pointing inward. And uh, no singular points are allowed in this uh, domain. This is the data. Uh, what is inside is obscure at the first glance. Poincaré claims that there is a closed orbit inside such a domain. If the vector field is analytic, then uh, this closed orbit is um, 
there is a limit cycle uh, inside uh, this domain. Um, this theorem is called Poincare Bendixon theorem. Uh, for a long time, I thought that Ivor Bendixon was a student of Poincare. Uh, not at all. He was an independent mathematician uh, brought up uh, in Sweden. And uh, he just gave uh, a rigorous proof of the previous theorem that Poincare simply sketched. Uh, Bendixon in 1901 uh, wrote a memoir about um, the uh, differential equations, and it was called precisely in the same way as the famous uh, memoir by uh, Poincaré uh, sur les courbes définies par les questions différentielles. Um, in his memoir, there are, in the Bendixson's memoir, there are several chapters. The first one is dedicated to the Poincaré Bendixson theorem, and the other four or five chapters are dedicated uh, to a theorem which was born uh, but not became completely mature uh, in the Bendixson's memoir. A lot of authors continued it, and they are uh, listed here. And the Bendixson's theorem claims that however complicated the limit point might, the singular point might be, after a finite number of so-called the singularizations, it may be split to simpler ones. Uh, first of all, you, might re you should require that the uh, differential equation is analytic and the singular point is complex isolated. Um, secondly, simpler singular points are, from the previous list, saddles, nodes, forces, centers, and one extra example should be added, it is so-called saddle node. The example of the differential equation is here, and all these points are elementary singular points. You take a complicated singular point, you may a polar blow up, you pass to polar coordinates, you paste in a circle instead of the singular point, and um, you get a simpler picture. Uh, in my example, the simpler picture, the elementary singular points, appear in one time. And when you have this picture, it is easy to study the original one via the projection. Um, another quotation from Poincaré that I like much is that the truth is born as a paradox and dies as a triviality. Uh, the uh, Poincaré, uh, the um, uh, desingularization theorem uh, was not proved uh, in the uh, memoir uh, by Bendixson. And first, several people gave a complete proof. And then uh, Van den Essen gave a simple proof. And uh, only uh, in, um, the, at the beginning of uh, this century, uh, the Bendixson theorem was the desingularization theorem was included in the textbooks. And at this spot, uh, we may say uh, that it becomes sort of a triviality. Now, let us pass uh, to the major problem in the field, uh, to the Hilbert 16th problem. Uh, in uh, the year 1900, Hilbert stated his famous uh, mathematical problems. And the second part of the Hilbert 16th problem is what may be said about the number and location of limit cycles of a polynomial vector field of degree n. In this interpretation, f is a ratio of two polynomials of degree n. 
and we ask uh, what is the maximal number, for instance, of limit cycles. Or another form, another specification of this question, uh, is it true that the number of limit cycles for a polynomial and differential equation is finite? Uh, the maximal number of limit cycles is called the Hilbert number. It is denoted by H of n. And nobody knows yet whether uh, this number exists. Even now, we do not know whether H of 2 exists. So the Hilbert 16th problem, second part, is one of the most persistent problems in the famous Hilbert's list. Uh, in 1923, uh, Dulac published a large memoir uh, where he stated the following theorem, a polynomial vector field may have uh, but a finite number of uh, limit cycles. Um, the first step of the proof is to start with a contradiction, with a contraposition. Uh, suppose that there is an infinite number of limit cycles. A polynomial vector field may be extended to the real projective plane. Uh, therefore, the situation is compact, and these limit cycles have to accumulate somewhere. They cannot accumulate to a closed orbit by analyticity of the Poincaré map. Uh, and uh, mm, this is a simple argument that I explained. Now, one should prove that they cannot accumulate to a so-called polycycle, a separatrix polygon. You have singular points, and uh, the solutions that together form an analytic curve through the point. They are called separatrices. So this polygon is formed by singular points, and they are separatrices. And uh, uh, one should prove that the limit cycles cannot accumulate to a separatrix polygon. Uh, Dulac's proof has three steps. The first step is using the desingularization theorem uh, by Bendixson. <clears throat> At that time, it was uh, quite a non-trivial fact, and Dulac uh, paid much attention to it. Then Dulac studies so-called Dulac's maps that I will show in the next uh, picture, and then studies their compositions. The Dulac's map occur only near saddles and saddle nodes. Uh, the geometric picture is almost similar, but the simplest example for the saddle is uh, a power Dulac map. X comes to X to the lambda. And uh, for the saddle node, the simplest example is uh, exponential. X comes to the exponential of negative 1 over x, so-called flat map. All the derivatives at 0 are 0. So Dulac studied these uh, maps, uh, ignore uh, the uh, lower lines right now, um, and uh, for a while, I uh, stop with uh, uh, the Dulux uh, problem and switch to the applications of uh, limit cycles. Uh, I want to tell you a few words about uh, Russian mathematicians uh, of the uh, generation um, born at the very beginning of the 20th century. And one of them is Russian mathematician and physicist Alexander Andronov, uh, who was one of the first to understand that auto-oscillations in physical devices 
are modeled by limit cycles. So you have some physical device, uh, radio device, for instance, and uh, it works in a stable regime. Uh, the external uh, power, for instance, is constant. And nevertheless, oscillations occur inside. What is the mathematical model for that? And Ronov uh, understood that uh, the mathematical model is the Poincare limit cycle. Uh, and Ronov uh, have done two great things besides. First, he decided to work not in uh, one of the major centers, one of the capitals in Russia, but rather to create a mathematical school in another city, in Nizhny Novgorod. And this mathematical school is uh, now very strong and uh, world known. Also, he was one of the founding fathers of the bifurcation theory. For instance, uh, he was the first uh, to investigate the appearance of uh, a limit cycle from a singular point. And uh, when uh, the parameter in the family that he investigated achieved a critical value and the singular point was ready to generate a limit cycle, uh, Andronov said that the singular point is pregnant by a limit cycle. Um, another person whom I want uh, to mention is uh, Ivan Petrovsky. Uh, who was a rector of Moscow State University uh, in the last uh, 22 years of his uh, life, and who attacked both parts of the Hilbert 16th problem. I mentioned uh, 10,000 of good deeds uh, that he have done. Uh, this is an estimate of one of the uh, scientists of his generation. Uh, the fact is uh, that in his time, there were two parts of uh, the scientific community. Uh, one was, uh, as one may say, ideologically faithful, and another was talented. There was an intersection, but it was not too big. And Petrovsky uh, was uh, a center in the Moscow University of the second community. And these thousands of good deeds are lives of talented people who were not ideologically faithful, but whom he allowed to realize themselves and to work in the academic world. Um, a few words about the first part of the uh, Hilbert 16th problem. This first part deals with something also algebraic. This is now not a differential equation with a polynomial right-hand side, but rather a polynomial itself and its level curves. Uh, the first unsolved question in, of, in the Hilbert's time uh, in this domain was the following. Consider a polynomial of degree 6. It was well known that it cannot have more than 12 closed co components of the level curve. This is one level curve of the polynomial, 12 ovals in total, one outside and 11 inside. Stating his problem, Hilbert claimed that he can prove that the picture that I showed here is impossible. But the first rigorous proof was given by Petrovsky in <coughs> 1938. Um, the tool that Petrovsky was, uh, was the following. Complexify the problem. He extended the problem to the complex domain, he worked in the complex domain, and then he got a, an answer for the real problem. Uh, 
together with his young student, Evgeny Landis, uh, Petrovsky enterprised an attack uh, to the second part of the Hilbert's problem. Uh, the strategy was the same, to complexify the problem, to study the problem in the complex domain, and then to get uh, an answer uh, for the real case. Uh, Landis at that time returned uh, after to Moscow State University after six years of war. Uh, he was uh, uh, a soldier for six years. Uh, he miraculously uh, came back alive. Uh, and he immediately started uh, the scientific work, even as the student of uh, the first year. Together with Petrovsky, they succeeded to make first steps in the theory of complex polynomial foliations, but uh, the, uh, the result uh, published in 55 was disproved uh, in 63. Uh, the following very interesting persistence problem uh, was claimed uh, to be solved in their uh, paper. Uh, but uh, it was not, in fact, solved, and it is not solved even up to now. Uh, the question is the following. Suppose that the right-hand side of the equation depends on some parameters, and the equation has a limit cycle. We begin to change the parameters. It is very easy to construct uh, a situation when the limit cycle will disappear. It happens uh, like with uh, the roots of uh, the square poly of the quadratic polynomial of the square equation. Uh, they may pass to the complex domain. But the limit cycle disappears from the real plane, yet preserves uh, in the complex domain. Uh, so the question is, uh, is there a domain in the parameter space through the boundary of which it is impossible to extend the complex limit cycle when you change the parameters? The answer is uh, still uh, unknown. And this was a gap uh, in the Petrovsky-Landis solution. In 81 as well, uh, the Dulux result uh, was disproved. Uh, Freddy Dumortier giving lectures in Brazil in 77 uh, claimed that he doubts whether the uh, proof is complete. Robert Moussou in 81 sent a letter with a question, uh, colleagues, what do you think on the Dulux proof? And uh, at that time, uh, I was ready to uh, point uh, the uh, fatal error in the Dulux um, investigations. Um, let me explain uh, in a few words where the error was. Uh, as you remember, there were three parts, uh, desingularization, which is uh, OK and even simplified uh, at uh, the new time, uh, study of Dulac's map for saddles and saddle nodes. Dulac made important progress in this study, but his study was in the C infinite category instead of analytic, and this was insufficient. And in the study of the compositions, Dulac made a fatal error. Uh, in this picture, I present a schematic uh, history of our knowledge about uh, limit cycles. So this is not a face portrait, uh, yet this is a time axis. And this graph is the rate of our knowledge about uh, limit cycles and the Hilbert 16th problem. P is Poincaré, H is Hilbert. Uh, D is uh, the Dulux theorem of 23. PL is Petrovsky Landis, the theorems of 55 and 57, when we thought that um, the 16th Hilbert problem is solved. Then, um, after the disproval of their work, we have uh, a fall down. And uh, 
we stay on this level, then we have another fall down in 81, and we are on the level approximately the same as at the beginning. Uh, then uh, there was some accumulation of information. Yet there are some branches that grew up uh, which are normal forms. Uh, this is not an Institut Henri Poincaré. This is infinitesimal Hilbert problem. Uh, uh, this is analytic foliations, resurgent functions by a cull. Uh, uh, these are uh, bifurcation. Uh, these are functional moduli. These are nonlinear Stokes phenomena. Uh, these are restricted version of the Hilbert's problem. Uh, some way up was uh, due to Ecal uh, and myself when the Dulux problem was uh, solved. Um, so a few words uh, about these developments. Probably I will skip some. Um, I will probably skip the infinitesimal Hilbert problem in details. The problem is the following. We have an integrable polynomial differential equation, epsilon equals 0. And we add a polynomial differential form or a polynomial vector field multiplied by epsilon. Um, this equation is integrable. All the solutions are form families of closed curves, different families. And the question is, how many limit cycles may be generated under this perturbation? Um, the uh, answer is related to the number of zeros of this integral. It is uh, the infinitesimal Hilbert problem. Uh, find an explicit bound for this number. And this problem was very recently solved by Yakovenko, Novikov, and Benjamini. Uh, so we have a sort of a first number in the theory of limit cycles. Uh, you have some problem about polynomial differential equations with uh, the restriction to the degree. And you have some upper bound related to the number of limit cycles. Now, there is another problem that may be called Hilbert Arnold problem. This is the following problem. You take a separatrix polygon, a polycycle, and you perturb it. The question is how many limit cycles may occur. The problem is stated not in the polynomial context, but rather in a new context of related with the philosophy of general position. You take a generic family of smooth vector fields. Instead of the degree of the polynomials, you consider the number of the parameters. Uh, the larger is the number of the parameters, the more complicated is the polycycle that may occur in a typical k-parameter family. And, uh, the question is how many limit cycles uh, may be generated from this polycycle. It appears that if the parameter is, if the polycycle has only elementary singular points, then the answer may be given. And the final result is uh, by Vadim Koloshin with this explicit estimate. It is another explicit number related to the problem of the number of limit cycles, once again in a particular problem. Um, there is a, an intensive uh, program uh, developed almost 20 years um, from now. Uh, Dumortier, Roussari, and uh, Rousseau uh, tried to prove the existence of H of 2. Uh, the existence of this number would follow uh, from the following statement. 
any polycycle, any separatrix polygon that occurs in the family of quadratic vector fields, that is vector fields with uh, degree two polynomials in the right hand side. Um, some polycycles may occur in this uh, family. If you prove that any of them may generate only a finite number of limit cycles, then by simple arguments you are done and the existence of H of two will be proved. Uh, so they listed uh, 121 different classes of polycycles. And uh, in the uh, past uh, almost 20 years, more than 80 of them were resolved, but uh, about uh, 30 uh, are uh, not yet uh, studied. Mm, I will show you uh, one very, very simple, probably not uh, too much expected uh, picture uh, that will show you uh, what specific cases are not yet studied. Mm. You can easily write a linear vector field uh, whose uh, uh, face curves are um, circles. You just erase uh, this bracket, and this is a very simple classical equation. Then you multiply this linear vector field by a linear function, and you get a straight line of singular points. This is a quadratic vector field. Uh, you can very easily plot the phase portrait, no problem about that. But any of the closed continuums here, this one with this red singular point, this one arc of a circle and a segment of singular points, and there is a continuum of uh, such uh, sets. Mm. Any set of this kind may generate uh, a limit cycle under perturbation. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the finiteness of the number of limit cycles generated is not proved in this case. Um, there is another uh, branch uh, on the picture that I have shown, complex polynomial foliations. And I only want to stress that the persistence problem for complex limit cycles, which is in this domain, is uh, still unsolved. Uh, there are some important news uh, in the theory of normal forms. Nonlinear Stokes phenomena is related uh, to this. And uh, um, it is mostly related to so-called parabolic fixed points. We start with a conformal map like this uh, by a formal coordinate change without taking care about the convergence of series. Um, we can reduce it to this normal form. But the normalizing series are divergent. And a new class of normal forms appears, namely uh, the normalizing series is asymptotic to a holomorphic map which has singularity at zero. It is defined in a sector with the singular point on a boundary. In this sector, the map may be transformed to the normal form. In another sector, it also may be transformed to the normal form. And uh, this couple of normalizing maps is called normalizing cochain. And this is an important new element in the theory. The moduli of analytic classification are the transition functions between uh, these two maps. Uh, they are a Calvaronian moduli. And normalizing cochains appear uh, in the study of saddle nodes um, produced by Martinet and Ramis. And I show you once again the same picture um, which Dulac uh, investigated. 
uh, the analytic version of the description of the Dulac map for the saddles brings us to so-called almost regular germs, some special class of analytic maps. And the study of the Dulac map for saddle nodes brings us to functional co-chains that I have uh, uh, described right now. Um, in the beginning of 90s, uh, the following finiteness theorems for limit cycles were proved. Uh, polynomial vector field in the plane have but a finite number of limit cycles, exactly what Dulac claimed. And limit cycles of an analytic vector field in the plane cannot accumulate to a polycycle of this field. Uh, once again, let us return to three steps that Dulac have made. Desingularization, it stays as it was and is even simplified. Uh, the description of the Dulac map requires quite new tools, and these tools were developed in the 80s by the people whom I uh, list here. Uh, and the last step is composition of the Dulac maps. It is a very difficult part, and uh, uh, it is uh, mostly uh, the problem to be solved um, in the proof. Uh, let us say a few words about uh, further uh, results. Uh, Murtada published a preprint, not yet published in any uh, journal, um, with the statement that a hyperbolic polycycle of an analytic vector field may generate but a finite number of limit cycles via a perturbation in the domain of analytic vector fields. Um, so um, hyperbolicity means that all the singular points are hyperbolic saddles on this uh, polycycle. Um, probably this is uh, one of the major statements Claimed. And uh, I want to conclude with uh, pointing the major open problems that remain uh, in the field. Uh, is it correct that the Hilbert number exists? That is, is it correct that there is a uniform upper bound for the number of limit cycles for any polynomial vector field of degree n in the plane? The upper bound should depend on n only. Uh, the question is uh, still open. Uh, even for n equal to, as I said. Uh, another more difficult problem is everybody believes that this upper bound exists. Give this upper bound. Uh, Smale uh, simplified uh, this problem, these two problems. And he uh, suggested to consider the family of Lienard equations. A lot of questions are much more simple for this equation than uh, for the general polynomial equation. The Lienard equation has this form. Only one polynomial of one variable is uh, in the right-hand side. Still, we do not know the answer. So at this but I stop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yashenko, for a wonderful lecture. Uh, are there any questions, <coughs> comments? Yes. Thank you. I have a, a, a question and a comment, both historical. First, you, you said that Andronov was a founder of bifurcation theory. I would rather say that it's Poincaré. Already in his thesis in 1879, there is a proof, I think, independent of Weierstrass, of the Weierstrass preparation theorem, which is fundamental in bifurcation theory. And there are many studies of bifurcation in Poincaré's celestial mechanics, for example, works. 
And, and the, the, the question is, I thought, but I, I never saw the picture that uh, Zhukovsky, before Poincaré, had drawn the pictures of uh, saddles and foci and, and so on. So maybe you can comment on, on this. Oh. I never heard about uh, the pictures drawn by uh, Zhukovsky, uh, and I did not compare the times. Thank you. Another question? Comment? About the return map, uh, Poincaré certainly uh, was knowing uh, uh, the Kronecker index, and uh, Kronecker used the uh, before Poincaré, in some sense, the Poincaré map from his index. Probably. Yeah, Jean-Marie is recalling me that uh, Jean-Marc Ginou from uh, Toulon found uh, unpublished, uh, at least unknown, uh, conferences of uh, Poincaré. I don't remember, it's in some school of electricity, or uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, on, uh, on, on the use of uh, limit cycles uh, in electricity and, uh, and so on, which were earlier than the application you, you, you mentioned also. And he, he pub, uh, his thesis is, is about this uh, question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Arnold uh, liked to say that the school of Mandelstam and Andronov uh, did not use uh, what Poincaré have done. So it is parallel to what you say. Uh, could you come back to the the finiteness theorems for um, I'm here. Could, could you come back to the finiteness theorems for for H n? I didn't understand why they don't apply the the uh, existence of H n. I, I must have missed some step. Uh, what uh, um, what place uh, uh, the do you the finiteness theorems that were uh, towards the, the end? The statement of the finiteness theorem. Yes, they are at the very end. Yes, uh, here they are. Is it what you want to see? Yes. Mm -hmm. So these theorems are proven? Yes. But then, oh no, okay, I get it, thank you. <laughs> there is a book published by Ekal in 92 and another one by myself in 91. Okay, thank you. Another question? Yes, so to, to add a comment to what I've said, so it's in some lectures of Poincaré at the uh, Ecole Supérieure des Postes et Télégraphes that in one of his chapters when he was dealing uh, with radio problem, Poincaré explicitly connected uh, the singing arc uh, coupled to an oscillating uh, electrical system which was used before the triod in, in radio, he connected it to a second order equation, which is essentially of Lienard type, but without expliciting the, the structure of the nonlinear part, he, he kept it. But he, so he had made the link between his uh, limit cycle concept and the self oscillation in a, in a radio system. So already mm -hmm. in, I think it is in 1908. Mm -hmm. so this is, has been recently discovered. Unfortunately, uh, in contrast with the other lectures of Poincaré at this Ecole uh, de PTT, uh, this is not included in his complete work, which are so less completed than expected. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, I guess that uh, Russian school was not well aware of yeah, what Poincaré was doing. Yeah, but it's normal. Nobody was aware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other questions or comments? Also, we thank you once more very much. Thank you. Thank you.